check-in at most of his Soups On events, and um, he's the reason I became a board member of the Ola Food Bank, because one of those Soups On events um, was benefiting the food bank, and I had no idea about the hunger in our county, and I was so touched by that, and got so involved, uh, because of Don Sandler, I can't tell you, I'm going to like cry, uh, <laughs> um, just the amazing work he's done, yeah, so, and now I have to get back to work, because I'm like on the job, yes, always you. working for Don. it seems like, and uh, that's why we're here barbecuing for him. Right on. He deserves a good send-off. My name is Jenna Brown, I'm the Executive Director of Yolo County Children's Alliance. I've known Don since I started working at YCCA eight years ago. He's been such a great supporter of the organization, and uh, just such a supporter of children in general. So, uh, thank you, Don. Happy retirement. Have a great time.
probably about hmm, 2008, and I was here for the International Festival, and Don came up to me and introduced himself, and uh, it's been kind of a, an ongoing relationship ever since. Uh, I run into him in all the best places, and uh, he's uh, an amazing guy and has done a wonderful job for Davis, so appreciate him and wish him well. So my name is Monica Brown, I'm a supervisor from Solano County, and I met Don probably like 15, 20 years ago being a Democrat with stuff that we were working on. For me, the thing what I love about Don is that he'll pick you up from the train station to take you to the Yellow Solano Air Quality Board meeting, but more than that, he's just so calm. It doesn't matter what chaos is happening at the board meeting or anything, he's always calm and very friendly and very nice and I shall miss him. Probably when I was working for Lois Walk in the State Assembly, uh, I ran her district office and uh, Don was, was maybe supervisor then or prior to supervisor, but he's always sort of been a part of the, part of the mix in Davis politically and he was very helpful to me when I was really active in the political scene around. Thank <laughs> you. 
office hours at Pete's Coffee or someplace. And I thought, you know, I, I need to know more about this community, so I went down there. Apparently he tells me, and I said, you know, I want to make a difference. I never remember saying that. We were on the Cesar Chavez Elementary School PTA board together, so that's third and some odd years ago. So I first met Don when he was on the Davis City Council, and he became a big supporter of Davis Media Access over the years, to the point where we were the final recipient of his wonderful annual Soup Sun event earlier this year. And honestly, it came at a moment in the pandemic where it kind of saved us. It really helped us out. So we're very grateful, God. We love you. David Gibbs with Congressman Garnett's office. I went down to the first board for district in here. So it's been, we've been here for 10 years. So it's been about 10 years. And he's just been a great partner um, in the community and for all the constituents. So thank you, Don. congressmen here with us tonight and I would like to invite them to say some brief remarks to kick us off and then we're going to have a few other folks speak and share all of what Don has meant to them but I think do you guys want me to just come to you over there so first the honorable John Garamendi thank you well thank you so very much where'd you go Don did you go inside to hustle all those people out here Okay, they're going to have a good time in there. For those of you that are uh, interested in all that this gentleman has done for this county and beyond, uh, this is going to take about uh, four or five hours. Uh, Mike Thompson, uh, who did represent this county a decade ago, and I are going to do a little duet here. In the meantime, I'm going to get started on the recitation of uh, Don Saylor's uh, work over the last... Uh, years as supervisor and beyond. So uh, settle down. If you haven't a glass of wine, you may. No, don't go do that. How do you, uh, how do I, or how do any of us really encapsulate an incredible 
piece of work done by an extraordinary individual. It's very difficult to do. We could recite the various tasks, uh, the various uh, challenges that Don took on. Uh, most recently, uh, he decided that the uh, overpass out at uh, Winters wasn't safe. And he started working on that project and working on it and working on it. And it's probably going to get done in the next uh, year, maybe next year and a half. But that's the kind of tenacity that's necessary if you're going to properly represent the people uh, that have elected you and beyond. But that's what Don has been able to do. Uh, and he's been not just in these uh, infrastructure projects, but in the projects of the community. Uh, and with a man who has an enormous compassion. I was watching him uh, as he greeted my daughter Faith and uh, grandson who are joining us here today uh, and just very quickly engaged. Oh, you're an artist. Yes, I'm an artist. Uh, and you also raise two kids. Yeah, two boys. That kind of empathy, that ability to connect with people is a very special gift that Don was able to use to really address the profound issues that exist in our communities, whether it's on the agricultural side, in the community, education, healthcare, homeless, all of those are things that Don was able to do as a supervisor. I'm gonna personally miss him. A dear friend, a colleague, somebody that I could lean on, somebody that I could grow, just in a convert, I could grow better in a conversation with him and somebody that I knew shared a concern for the community. Uh, joining me, Mike Thompson. Mike, come on up here a moment. Uh, I, don't, I don't need to introduce Mike. Uh, redistricting brought me to Yolo County a decade ago. Redistricting sent Mike out of Yolo County a decade ago. Guess what redistricting has done? Mike, you're back. Well, John, thank you very much. And I am glad to be back, so this is absolutely wonderful. But I'm, I'm sad to, uh, to see Don retire. And when I represented Yolo County before, I had the great pleasure and honor of working with Don. Okay. <laughs> and working with Don both on the city council uh, and after he got elected to the board of supervisors. And I want to just double down on what John said. Uh, okay, passion and tenacity, uh, that's an understatement. I remember the first time, that, and I don't know if you remember, but the first time that you and I did anything together, you said, you're coming to my house, you need to see my solar installation. <laughs> and here we are in the garage, and he is, he, talk about in the weeds, and this wire goes here, and this wire goes there, and this is up on the roof, and we need to do this to save the planet, it's a responsible thing to do. So Don is, is dedicated to making our lives our community and our world a better place. And as John said, you can see it in everything that he works on. If it's mental health, if it's health care, if it's housing, the un unhoused. And I know when we, when I first got redistricted, when, when it was first known that I was going to be redistricted back to YOLO, Don was there. Had me over looking at some, uh, at some uh, housing units. Had me down in winters meeting his constituents down there. He said, I want this to be seamless and I want to make sure you know everybody and that they know you so you can do the good work that needs to be done. So Don, I want to thank you for your years uh, at local government. That, that's a big lift. You know, John and I, we can go back to Washington. You've got to go to the grocery store and hear the complaints every day. <laughs> but uh, you've just done a marvelous job in Yolo County. Our state and our world is better uh, for the work that you've done. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And now uh, we have this, uh, this congressional record statement. John and I were able to read this into the congressional record. And the cool thing about it is this will be part of the record, part of the congressional record for as long as we're the United States of America. And uh, after the election yesterday, we, 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 we're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay that way for a while. <laughs> Mike, I, when we do these, uh, I, I really began to read them 
And I looked at the, I look at it and it says, the thing that's cool about it, it says congressional record, proceedings and debates of the 117th Congress, second session, volume 168, Washington, Wednesday, November 9th, 2022, number 172. And then Don, are you patient out there? This is gonna take about an hour to recite all of this. We won't do that. But your record of what you have done in this community uh, is now in the record of the United States of America. And it deserves to be there. Congratulations. All right, now that more of y'all are out here, I just want to say hi, I'm Tara Thronson. I've been, <laughs> nice to meet you, right? We're gonna have a fun evening. I'm Deputy to Supervisor Saylor, and I, it's been a joy and honor to serve in this role for the past seven years and to serve all of you. Don, tonight we have a fun lineup of speakers. I know it's hard to top congressional folks, but we're gonna try to, try to round it out. So we're gonna start with Yolo County, past, present, and future. So I'm going to invite this group of speakers to come up. This includes current Davis mayor and supervisor-elect, Lucas Frerix. Yay. Yay. Supervisor and Assemblywoman Helen Thompson. Former Yolo County CAO Pat Blacklock. And I, and I think our fourth member is um, unable to join us tonight. So here we go. Hey, Lucas. Well, good evening, Davis. Good evening, Yolo County. How's everyone doing? Woo! Welcome to the 17th annual da Dawn Sailor Soups on. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Okay, wrong event. Wrong event. My apologies. Just force of habit. Uh, so, uh, we are celebrating this evening Don Saylor's 27 years of elected service. Now, just to be clear, we have 27 speakers lined up, so uh, one for each year of service. So, we, you know, just stay tuned here with us. So just keep, a, keep we'll, we'll try and keep it moving fast. Uh, all kidding aside, um, so honored to be able to be here uh, as part of this celebration of someone who I uh, obviously consider a very close friend and a mentor to me. Uh, I, it's, I had to laugh when I was first, uh, it sort of chuckled a bit when I first received this program and order from, from Tara uh, talking about being a part of the uh, past, present, and future uh, discussion and, and that cohort. And there are some mighty fine folks who are going to be talking here in a minute, but uh, I, why I laughed is because, uh, yeah, sure, there might be this assumption that, uh, you know, coming in as supervisor-elect and filling some very, very large shoes uh, that, that might be um, uh, part and parcel of being part of the future. But I, uh, for Don and I, there's a lot of past and there's a lot of present that is also involved in our relationship. Uh, Hiram Jackson, who is a new Davis Joint Unified School District uh, Board of Trustee member who hasn't quite been uh, sworn in yet, is uh, he found an article the other day. And he, he's always at the library and he's always looking up old articles, Davis history. He found an article in the Davis Enterprise from 1997 uh, talking about Youth in Government Day at Davis High. And we're both, myself, I, I was in the role of the city manager at that time, and Don Saylor was a school board trustee, and both of us were, uh, I think that's probably the first time that we were in, uh, or sort of uh, tied together in any kind of article or uh, mention in the news, news media. Uh, and I am so grateful for knowing Don since I was at Davis High. I uh, came here from Alaska for my senior year of high school and uh, became friends with Don through uh, being involved with Acme Theater Company, and we have been uh, very close friends ever since. Uh, in terms of the present, uh, I think a lot of us don't realize all of, the, all of the different, you think you serve on the Board of Supervisors or the City Council or uh, the school board, and that's kind of your role. Well, that is one part of our roles, but uh, we have, I think we currently serve on nine separate boards together and have for the greater part of 10 years now. So uh, from Valley Clean Energy to the Capital Corridor to SACOG uh, to the Yolo Habitat Conservancy uh, and uh, many others, we have served uh, side by side for these last decade together. And then of course, uh, a bit about the future. Uh, I am so grateful to be able to uh, run, have run for the Board of Supervisors and to be able to step into a position that has been so unbelievably and ably represented by Don Saylor for the last dozen years. Uh, I could, I'm so grateful. It's an honor to know you as a friend, have you as a mentor, uh, and I'm really, really, uh, it's a pleasure to be able to be here today. And boy, they are some very, very large shoes to fill. So I will try to do that justice, Don Saylor. Thank you so much.
thank you very much to all of you for being here, and it's a wonderful opportunity to say thank you to, to Dawn. Um, I've known Dawn a long time through many various avenues in our community, and I was asked to talk about the things that are special, that are special to me about Dawn's work. What I really appreciate, and I know a lot of others do, is the fact that he took on the issues of mental illness, health, provision of services to the underserved, the people who are without homes, and did a wonderful job with all of that. Um, in 1950, uh, no, 2018. <laughs> I didn't know you in 1950. 2018, uh, after many, many years of people in Davis and uh, Winters traveling out of their communities to have services in health and mental health and social services, Don was assertive and advocated for uh, those services to, provided, to be provided in the communities. So there is a county service building in, West, uh, in um, Winters and one here in Davis. And they just had a uh, groundbreaking for one in Esparto. And I think it's wonderful that people don't have to leave their home to go off and get services uh, that they need. So that's an issue that took a long time. You may think that's a simple thing to do. Let me tell you that pushing on those issues is very hard, especially because the folks who are mentally ill and who are in great need of service are usually the last on the budget priority list. And Dawn has never let that get away, not let that happen. So I appreciate that very much. I worked really hard when I was in the legislature to do a bill that was uh, AB 1421. It's called Laura's Law, and it's about getting people treatment, assisted outpatient treatment. It involves a court process, and it involves uh, their uh, appreciation for what they need to do to help themselves. It was passed and signed by the governor, and the states were, uh, the counties in the state were very reluctant to implement it. It had a lot of, as you can imagine, uh, anxiety and angst over it all. Anyway, Cal uh, when that was passed, Dawn made sure that Yolo County was the third county in the state of California to implement that law. And it's a part of the continuum of services for people who are seriously mentally ill. And I greatly appreciate that as well. Don, for many years, sat on the Health Council, and he sat on the Mental Health Board in Yolo County, as well as all the boards he sat on in the region. And that's, that's, a, day to, that's a, a monthly meeting, and when you attend those meetings, you learn a lot about what's actually happening in your own county. And that helps to provide the uh, information you need as a supervisor to go back out to your colleagues on the board and, and advocate for services that you've heard the community members at those two boards uh, want to have. I firmly believe that the Health Council was really good for Dawn because he assumed a big leadership role in our COVID response in this county and helped to um, tie together the relationship and partnership with UC Davis that has been unique in this whole county of uh, in this whole country of testing uh, for COVID. So I'm appreciative of that as well, Don. Um, yeah, we should thank him for that for sure. See, I'm still old-fashioned enough. I use yellow paper and pen. <laughs> And I know Patrick's going to come up here and have his talk on his cell phone, and I'm going to cry. <laughs> anyway, um, Dawn's values are uh, in support of services for people who need them, the uh, vulnerable folks, the children who are abused, the senior adults who are having a hard time financially and every other way. And he's always acted on those um, beliefs that they need to be helped, and I've appreciated that. He discovered that some of the students at Davis were hungry. Wow, when they pay that big tuition and they live in this wonderful town and they're hungry, but what did he do? He didn't walk away from that. He founded a group that does, does food and adds to a food closet at the campus, 
and I, for the life of me, can't remember the name of that organization right now, but we should advertise it, Dawn. Tell me the name. Compass. Compass. So he doesn't walk away from problems. He sees them, and he tries to do some good to um, make them better, make everything better. Um, I think his family should be thanked, and I know they're all here. <laughs> Julie, Don's wife. There she is, way in the back there. Aaron and Kate. And Kath and I have known Kate since she was a little girl starting out playing the fiddle, and you'll hear her later play. She's a wonderful young woman, as is Aaron, a young man with a family of his own now, and Julie has been a marvelous supporter and helper to Dawn. And you can't do a job like Dawn's or any other elected official and do a good job if you don't have your family support. So thanks to all of you. Well, Dawn, for you, my best wishes are in retirement that you are healthy and happy and productive, and I know you won't be um, not doing anything because that's just not you. <laughs> so I welcome you to the world of retirement. There's certainly plenty to do. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. My name is Pat Blacklock, and I had the pleasure of serving as the county administrator for much of Don's tenure on the Board of Supervisors. Thank you, Helen, by the way, for hiring me into that position. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're starting to hear some themes, I think, tonight about Don's leadership. The congressman mentioned tenacity, for example, and you certainly heard some of the passion for the work when Helen spoke. And I want to talk about how that culminated with good governance and how that impacted the community that we live in. And one example that I'll cite is that when Don was appointed to the local mental health board, as Helen mentioned, he quickly assessed uh, some of their needs and came, I met with him in his office and he said, I want to develop a strategic plan for the local mental health board. Now those of you that know the local mental health board know that they are wonderfully dedicated, passionate individuals advocating and giving up their evenings probably aren't that excited about spending it doing methodical strategic planning in those evenings that they're volunteering. And so when I walked out, I thought, that's never going to happen. But it did happen. And I credit Don's leadership 100% for that tenacity to lead them through a productive strategic planning process to where they actually came up with the plan and begin to move forward on some of those deliverables. And you heard earlier what some of those are in terms of people now having access within their own communities to mental health services. And that would not have happened but for Don's leadership in that instance. Another very visible example is when you see ambulances going around the county. When Don was appointed to the then Joint Powers Agency that administered emergency medical services for Yolo County and a number of other counties, he went through his thoughtful planning process of gathering data so he could assess and analyze how effective it was because he was representing the county in that system. And he quickly determined that something was amiss. And as I'm sure he encountered many times in his career, he was basically told that can't be changed. And if you know one thing about Don, that answer's not gonna fly. So using tenacity, Don began pulling on that thread. And lo and behold, found out that it could be changed. And this was not an easy task to change, but Don continued to facilitate it and stayed dedicated to doing it and ultimately prevailed and substantially changed the system so that now, if you live in Winters or Esparto, it is a fact that you are much more likely to survive, for example, a cardiac event because of Don's work in modifying the ambulance system because ambulances are now stationed in Winters and Esparto. So when I say it's visible, next time you're driving through Winters or driving through Esparto and you see an ambulance in the fire station, you can know that it was Don's leadership that made that possible and that people are surviving like <laughs> this. And there are multiple examples like that, from Yolo County's own strategic plans to the board governance manual that Don was part of a team that developed that spoke to how the Yolo County board was going to act in a way and, and be part of a high-performing governing board. And that governing manual that Don was part of the sort of pioneering effort to craft 
It's now used by dozens of counties throughout California, and Yolo was the first, and Don's leadership helped make that happen. So good governance at all levels in the organization. I credit Don with your leadership, tenacity, and passion for making that happen. And as a resident of Yolo County myself, I know that the community is better off for the long term for Don's leadership. So thank you, Supervisor Saylor. Appreciate it. <laughs> Our next speakers are Bob Seeger and Emily Henderson, and we've heard a lot about Don's leadership in Yolo County, but as you all know, he had um, a lot of elected service prior as school board member and city council, and Bob has been around all that time, including uh, his work with him on the campus, and he's also a friend, so we've asked him to share some words about what Don's service has meant to him. Thanks, Tara. <clears throat> so um, just a little... Um, Thank you to Don and, and some observations of, of our time together. Uh, it's really a treat to be with all of you tonight and, and honor Don and his extraordinary contributions to the community. Don and I have been friends for almost 35 years uh, when Jennifer and I first moved to town and became friends with Don and Julie. And I think it was through our kids, uh, Kate and uh, Andrea, um, Helen already mentioned it, playing the fiddle together in Diane Wagstaff's Suzuki violin class. So I'll do a little Davis trivia for you. Don, Kate will know this. So the little Suzuki kids used to play on the second floor balcony of a building across the street from the E Street Plaza. Um, who can remember the store that they played up in front of on, on, on the second floor? Somebody out there. The Naturalist. The Naturalist. Remember The Naturalist? Okay, a little Davis trivia. Um, but I digress. Uh, let's talk about Don Saylor, the early years. Don't worry, not that early. We, we, won't, we won't go all the way back there. Um, but seriously, I, I did have the good fortune to, to work with Don in the early years of his career in, in elected public office. Um, another trivia question, who was Don's campaign manager for his first successful bid for elected office in 1995 for the Davis School Board? Anybody know? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I had no business being a campaign manager. I had no experience being a campaign manager. But Don had a plan. And we were able to pull it off. We got a lot of people together. Um, and Don was elected to the school board in 1995. And the rest is history, as they say. And that began his long and amazing um, tenure in, in, in public service, um, which brings me to the first of two themes. Uh, I'll call them uh, through lines that I'd like to observe about Don. Uh, the first through line for me in Don's lifelong, absolute, never-ending dedication to helping young people succeed. You'll see evidence of this pop up all over the place tonight as people describe Don's contributions to our community from his personal and his professional and his public life. In his personal life, he couldn't stop himself. He coached things like Odyssey the Mind, helping young people imagine their way to creative problem solving. Um, he was a longtime force behind the Young Persons Theater. You'll probably hear more about that which, um, from Emily. In his professional life, he worked in youth corrections, seeking better outcomes for young people in great need. And in his public life, Don shaped the growth of our schools in ways that retained the unity of a common high school he championed music programs and diverse programs to reach students with diverse learning styles. He dedicated himself to creating opportunity for young people his entire life. Uh, and I know that in his subsequent roles as a Davis City Council member and mayor and, and county supervisor um, and board chair, the impact of decisions on young people has always been at the forefront of Don's mind. Oh, and by the way, we had some fun in those, in those early campaigns. Um, I remember one... Halloween in particular. Um, Halloween coming right before election day as it always does. Um, when I absolutely terrified the entire Sailor family by showing up at the front door with a homemade Don Sailor mask on. <laughs> kind of creepy, right? So it brings me to the second theme or through line about Don that I'd like to mention tonight. 
We all know that public service is hard work. Public service requires the hard work of leading, governing, listening, compromising, competing, taking a stand, digging into the details, suffering, praise, and criticism. The hard work of keeping your eye on the prize and persisting, all of which Don did with great dedication and skill. But more than anything, I think Don's gift to us all is that Don sees public service as an act of joy. Think about your own example in your time with Don. He's made it a foregone conclusion that he'll bring us together to celebrate, to create, to learn and work together, to break into that huge grin of just doing good work. So I'll end with a thank you to Don for these gifts, the gift of opportunity that he helped to create for so, so many young people, the gift of making public life a theater for joy, and the ongoing gift of good friendship. Thank you for the gifts, my friend. May the life I lead speak for me. May the life I lead speak for me. When I come to the end of a road and I lay down my heavy load, may the life I lead speak for me. Good evening, friends. My name is Emily Henderson. It was my pleasure to work for many years as Don's assistant deputy, first with Diane and then with Tara. And what a life, what a life Don Saylor has led. Um, working on Don's team was a fascinating and humbling and mysterious and deeply fulfilling experience. But I am not here to tell stories of his office. So I will not tell you about his bizarre hatred of pencils or that there was this one time he decided he absolutely needed a temporary tattoo of a Yolo County tractor. <laughs> I have been asked to speak about Don's work with our local nonprofits, which means, of course, that I am here to talk about soup. Over the past two decades, Don's annual Soups On fundraiser has raised over $400,000 for 12 different nonprofits. <laughs> That's right. He has raised the profile of small organizations and he has infused critical one-time funding into larger groups. But more than that, he has brought our community together time and again to learn about and support causes that matter to all of us. A community-led effort to shelter our unhoused neighbors, our natural environment, families escaping domestic violence, reducing food insecurity for our kids and our seniors, supporting detained immigrant youth and migrant farm worker families, youth development programs dressed up like theater companies, foster youth, families, and all of us who struggle with mental illness. And earlier this year, at a time when truth telling and local journalism are more important than ever, Don's final Soups On event supported Davis Media Access, which strengthens our community by providing alternatives to commercial media. Folks, it is a lot of soup, just so much soup. Uh, working in the office, I got to see Don spending hours and hours raising funds, always finding the perfect band, and wrangling the donations. And together, our whole region learned to donate early because you know the emails were just going to keep coming, and to roll up our sleeves and to show up for a good cause and a good time. And of course, Soups On isn't all of the support that Don has given our nonprofit community. From policy making on the dais, to convening nonprofit leaders, to volunteering himself for Reels on Wheels, to hosting countless board meetings for Acme Theatre Company in his living room, Don's leadership and support has extended in many different directions. Don, the life you lead has been an inspiration to all of us. And as you come to the end of this chapter in the road, I just want to say thank you, and we love you very much. I think this is a great moment to remind you all 
that in, uh, as you know, Don never has a party without raising funds for a good cause. So tonight, if you haven't seen it already, the Sailor Family Scholarship. So this is pretty incredible. Their family has put this together and this is paying it forward. And we need your help so that we can start giving out donations as soon as 2023. And this is for seniors in Davis or Winters to give back to District 2 who have had some sort of traumatic experience in their life that may have put them on a path that makes higher education or post-secondary education more of a challenge. And this will just give them a boost to continue on. So if you, there's QR codes other places, there's a website, come see me later if you wanna write a check. It's to the YOLO Community Foundation. And this is a way for all of us to keep continuing his legacy moving forward. But before the next speaker, I'm gonna ask Bobby to come up real quick. So quick thanks to the firefighters for providing the tri-tip sliders tonight. Thank you. And as you know, we have all kinds of food out there. Most of it was donated and our, our beer and wine vendors. So we're always grateful for them, always patronize those businesses. But the firefighters have a quick little gift for Dawn before we continue on through our program. Something you've always wanted. Since you were a little kid. Yes. Oh, here we go. Uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to do this. We just wanted to say thank you to Don um, for all the years of support uh, and helping us through some hard times. Um, I think the first time I met you it was on the school. You were running for school board. And we didn't endorse people that ran for school board, but Dawn talked us into it. <laughs> and uh, that began a, French, a friendship uh, over many, many years. Uh, we endorsed him for school board, city council, and um, for county supervisor. And uh, you know, this is a, a leather helmet, which is a tradition in fire service. Um, and uh, we want to just say thank you for everything that you've done for us and the support over, your, over the years. Uh, it was signed by my, my board. And uh, thank you for, for all your support and actually for uh, my personal friendship with you. It's much appreciated. Thank you. I've learned so much working for and with Don. And when I think about what Don's service has meant to me, it comes down to this. He is the model of a true public servant. He is committed to service to others, and at the center of it is the people. Don has an authentic interest in connecting with and supporting all the people of Yolo County. And when I think about the policies he's most passionate about, I think about deeply personal stories he has connecting policies to people, combating food insecurity, preventing tobacco addiction, fair wages for working families, protecting the planet and building a robust economy. The list of topics is long, and I will not go through all of them, but his guiding and centering voice is the impact these policies have on the people. Don, it has been a great joy and honor to serve the people of Yolo County with you, and your public service doesn't end on December 31st. It will continue through the lessons and wisdom you have bestowed on each of us. So you don't forget your current and past staff. We have a little gift for you to remember us. <laughs> it's a it's all of your staff. It's an image of them. <laughs> And on behalf of the family, Aaron Saylor is here to speak. Good, good evening. I'm, 
it's it's amazing actually hearing other people speak because uh, I've been out of town for 20 years. I don't actually know what all he's been up to. Um, and just knowing how many lives he's touched, I, I've had snippets. Um, and snippets throughout childhood, uh, of course, because as a child you don't always pay so much attention. Um, but as... Thanks, Lucas. <laughs> um, as, as Don entered his, his uh, career in elective office, um, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll tell you that he talked to, talked to us and engaged with us and uh, asked us, you know, how we felt about him running for office. And honestly, I don't remember that. But what I do remember is being in the committee meetings, being in the committee meetings, first of the campaign we lost and second of the campaign we won and being listened to. Uh, this is, uh, as, as a 12-year-old, um, being taken seriously, having my ideas acted on. Um, we, uh, we did Halloween candy, we ran the button machines, which as a parent now I realize was an amazing trick. You get your kid to color these buttons, parents can't throw that away. They've got to wear it. They've got to wear it because their kid colored it. And meanwhile, the parents talk with Dawn. And, um, so being engaged with this throughout, and not always seeing, not always seeing the things that that uh, that he was showing to to the rest of the community, but always seeing the work, knowing that it takes door knocking, knowing knowing that it takes meetings, knowing that it takes networking, and knowing that it takes the losses, um, because again, you know, the first campaign he lost, and then the second campaign, he worked harder, he built a stronger network, he got endorsements. Um, and he learned from it, he came back. And for me, in my formative years, this is how I learned what public service is. This is how I learned what elective, uh, elective office should be, and this is what I expect of the people that I support in politics, is I expect them to get out and work. I expect them to do their homework. Every month for school board meetings, he would receive a packet. Back then, it was a binder. Um, and it was dropped off in the evening in our house, and I remember this binder arriving, um, and I remember that he'd sit with it and do his homework for the meetings because it was critical to him to understand exactly what he was going into and why, and to, to know what, what the ramifications of these policies would be. Because in his previous, previous work, we're at that point? No, previous to that. He was an analyst. He was a policy analyst. So uh, if we jump forward, we jump forward to 2002, 2003. He was considering running for city council. And again, my limited perspective, um, I said to him, well, what you care about is kids and schools. Why are you running for city council? Why would you do this? And I didn't realize somehow that he'd been a city, in a city planner's office in Wyoming, that he had a degree in public policy, um, and that he was a member of his community. Um, and he, he spoke to me at the Puda Creek, Creek Cafe up in Winters, and laid out for me um, his belief in public service, um, and in, in the value of taking those opportunities to help, taking those opportunities to do the work, um, and that, that there's a difference between politics and public service. And that was a moment that is, has stuck with me throughout my life. Um, the differentiation between politics, between uh, the machinations and the mechanics of it, and the need for true public service for putting the community first and doing the work. Um, and now I'm, uh, I'm approaching the age that he was when he ran for office. Uh, I, my, my daughter's in the room, or maybe has got cold and left. Um, but I, I see now just the, how overwhelming it all is even before you put yourself on the public stage and take on and take responsibility for everyone in your community, um, and it, it's incredible. And um, for me, I've I've always had I've always had you there, Dad. And um, 
I just... When you see him putting in the work, just know he's, he's trying to give us the world that he wishes he'd been given. And thank you. Now, if he can pull himself together, it's the uh, the friend that we've all been honoring tonight. It's his. It's time to hear from him, Supervisor Don Sailing. Well, I, I just I'm just happy to be invited. <laughs> the last time I left a job, they celebrated after I left. <laughs> so what can I say? But there's so many of you who seem to like me. I think maybe I should run for office. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> been there, did that already. Uh, there's so many people to thank. I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm deeply touched by all the all those who came and spoke. I'm deeply touched by all of you who managed to stay here and keep listening. Uh, usually, folks by this time would be drifting off to the bathroom, having conversations, and so on. But thank you so much, everybody. There's when you look around the. the, the the people who brought this party together, they've been working in secret for several months. Well, mostly secret. They call themselves the Invisible Council of Planners. Uh, so I, there's things I don't yet know about what's going on here this evening. And maybe, maybe I'll figure it out as time goes by. Uh, I had no idea the, the wonderful comments that people would be making. I'm so grateful for the, the people who brought food tonight. Uh, Jim's, uh, what is the paella place? Hooked on paella. I hope some of you had that. The Davis firefighters keep us not only keep us safe, but made wonderful tri-tip for us tonight. Upper crust brought delicious sweets, and we have wines from several wineries in the in the county. And Superworks beer, wonderful, wonderful treats. The band is wonderful. The the band uh, Wealth of Nations they actually formed after one of our soup song parties, and they had a special guest here, the Barry Melton, the fish. Uh, Barry Melton is with them tonight, and I don't know if Kate's managed to be, be playing fiddle with them or not, but every every place we go in Yolo County, we're going to encounter wonderful wine and beer and food and music. And one of those pieces of music that I always really like, that touches our family's life and is so connected to us, is the, the school music performing groups and the theater groups at Davis High School and the other schools. And I hope you enjoyed being greeted by the Davis High School uh, String Quartet. I'm so grateful for this community, for all that, all that we do together. It's so wonderful to look around and see so many colleagues on the Davis City Council, the school board, and the county board of supervisors. I counted the other day. I've served with 23 different individuals over the past 27 years. It would be 24 different, but Ruth Atkinson actually, she, she and I served together on both the school board and the city council. So there are 23 unique people. I see several of my colleagues from other counties here. I think Brad Wagneck is here, and earlier Monica Brown was here, and, and uh, Gary Bradford, Sutter County, County Supervisors who come from other places. Our regional network of elected officials is really critical to serving our communities because our communities are not divided by the boundaries that we imagine to be in place. And several colleagues from the Davis City Council, I see Josh, Chapman and Gloria Partida. Congratulations, Gloria, on the support of this community once again for the morning your children. And Lucas Sparrows, who you've already seen. Uh, several of my, of my current colleagues were here. You know, over those years, we didn't always agree on every issue uh, among on those boards. We worked through a lot of them. But I know that every single one of them I learned from and every single one of them was there for a good reason. And there's some, and sometimes it's hard to discern, but, 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 they were, but they were all there because they needed to serve their, their community. And the through line for me, and you know, Bob, and thank you so much for your comments, and Aaron, you touched me deeply uh, with yours. But the through line has always been about people and planet. It's always been for me, food security for the poor, making it possible for people to move from place to place in our region, our climate, 
make that's a, the, the issue that we all need to work on mental health services and health services we've made strides together we've made so many strides together uh, I want to thank this community for the work that we've been doing together we're not done there's a lot of unfinished business there are new challenges that are going to be facing us I'm so pleased that Lucas Frerix is stepping in to be to move from the Davis City Council as mayor to the Board of Supervisors in Union County. So please, I hope you serve with Lucas in the same way that you served with me. And Lucas, I, I'm going to make you a promise in front of all these nice people. Uh, for, I'm not going to come to public comment for the first six months. <laughs> six months. You've got it. <laughs> Thanks to, the, to all of you for being here, to all of you who have come so over and over and over to our Soups On events and contributed. Uh, thank you to our community. I'm so much stronger for it. Our, our family is so well served by working with all of you. The gift that, I, that, we've, that I've received personally from this is I've got to know the vision of the people in our, in our communities. I've gotten to know their challenges, their struggles, their dreams, what makes them happy. It's the most amazing thing that happens when you're in these local roles. You really do become entwined with the fabric of community. It's an absolute blessing and gift. And for that, thank you. But most of all, thanks to the original campaign committee. Thanks to Aaron and, and Kate, to Julie, Thanks for the years of saying, yes, maybe not this time, one more time, maybe. Uh, saying yes so often, letting our house be consumed by having tear sheets in the dining room with, with the schedule and the, the map of events and the listing, the, like the little thermometer that you see. We've got 13 endorsements. We've got 106 endorsements. We're putting out this many lawn signs all of that stuff that was a part of our lives for, for all of these years. Uh, and now, now it's time for us to spend some time together and do a few other things. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. No card. If you don't want to take a picture, that's fine. Just write him a note. And we're going to welcome back to the stage Wealth of Nations with their guest, Barry Melton, the fish of Country Joe and the Fish. Yes. And perhaps Kate as well. All right. Thank you. Now all that I see on this stage, come with me. 